happen?
Joining us from Marquette, head coach Megan Duffy. We'll begin with an opening statement, then we'll move on to questions. Please wait for the microphone and state your name and affiliation before your question. Coach? Uh, congratulations to UConn. I thought they were um, tremendous defensively. Um, we felt um, some momentum and confidence coming into this game, um, you know, catching a break a little bit with Edwards being out, but um, just could never find our, our rhythm uh, offensively. Questions? <clears throat> Dom. <clears throat> Coach Dom Amore from the Hartford Current. Uh, what did UConn do specifically to compensate for Aliyah not being out? Did they give you some different look that maybe you weren't expecting? Or what, what, what did they show? No, I think um, the way their guards can get up in pressure and you know blow up some of your offense, I think that's always been, um, when they're at their best, what it looks like. And I thought, um, as much as we didn't have turnovers in the first half, we only had two. Just we didn't have a lot of rhythm and flow. I thought we were a little bit um, just unsure with our reads. I thought we had open shots and just couldn't see it. Um, and then when we got them, um, we're not able to make them. It's kind of a weird game. There's a lot of air balls and shots coming off the rim for, for both teams at times. So um, yeah, just um, I, I thought just thought their pressure. They you know they've always they've been switching all year with a lot of screening stuff. Um, and I thought they did a really nice job with that. And then Paige was obviously tremendous. You know, um, just consistent and. You know, taking advantage of every single one of our mistakes on the defensive end, and um, I thought we could still make a little bit of a run after halftime, and you know, just for whatever reason, it, it went the wrong direction. Question up front from Brad. Hi, Coach Brad Lake from WNBA Swish. We, with all the huge competition in the Big East this year, now that the tourney is done, can you speak of? Do you think that your team has made a strong enough case to the selection committee to be in the big dance? Yeah, absolutely. I think we're, we're uh, deserving of being in the NCAA tournament, our body of work, um, 23 wins for our program. Um, you know, non-conference, we went out and beat Illinois, who was preseason ranked, Arkansas, Boston College. Um, you know, consistently uh, put up, you know, good net numbers all year. Obviously, Connecticut has not been uh, nice to us all year, which is happens to a lot of teams, I guess. Um, and then, you know, for us, the, the losses we had in conference were um, all by five, six points or less. Um, and so, again, tough losses, um, teams that obviously really know you well. But I think, you know, setting us up for the tournament, um, I think we got a great veteran group. I think we, we have a style that's tricky to, to guard. Um, you know, I think um, our body of work and, you know, just the – the consistency of what we've done this year makes us uh, very worthy. A uh, question from Roger in front left. Roger Cleveland from the Waterbury Republican American. Coach, what, what exactly is it that makes Paige so difficult? I mean, she just seemed to weave through so many players and get up the shots that she wanted. I mean, you, you know, when you lose Edwards for today, you, you know where they're going. You know she's going to take probably a few more shots. You know... Um, how dangerous she can be. We, we tried to get out and hedge and, and pressure a little bit more and make her become a passer. Um, what I thought she was really good at is getting downhill before we even got to the ball screen at times. Um, you know, I know coaches always preaching to them about their movement, and I thought um, she just was completely under control the entire game. Um, that's how she's always been. That's why she's so good, you know. I know I'm biased. I think she's, you know, if not one of the best players, you know, top two in the country just because of how she impacts a game and makes other people better. Um, you know, she's so fluid. Like, we, we yesterday we played Olsen, and the way she changes pace and dribbles all the time, like, is a little bit different because they're still big-time scores, but she does it with, like, less dribbles and the way she can pass the ball in her supporting cast. So, um it's it's just phenomenal to see. I mean, not being on the other side of it, obviously, today, but the way she um, just orchestrates their offense and timely plays. Um, you can watch her in the middle of the game give confidence to her teammates um, just by being poised and, and versatile. So um, she, she's tremendous, and then her rebounding. And, and you think about this, she's playing, you know, huge minutes. Um, she doesn't get much of a break. Uh, so it's, it's, it's even more respectable what she's doing with that. Question in the back right corner. Hey, Coach. Um, Azar Johnson from NBA Online. I have a quick question. Um, considering the loss today, and I'm pretty sure postseason play is in your future um, right around the corner, are you concerned about um, the, the players? Like, you know, sometimes when you, you get a loss like this, it might 
it might take a little a win out of your team, but then sometimes you might go back and look at it and say this is more of a motivation for us to get better coming in the postseason play right around the corner. Yeah, I think this game is such a – I mean, every year we're in this, you know, four or five and playing – I mean, every year I've been in the league, but I mean, it's the first year when Connecticut wasn't in the league, we play them three times. It's really difficult. Um, you know, we've we've – Clipped them off one time, and the other ones have been really, or the other ones have been really difficult. So, you know, it's it's just different than some of the other teams in our league. So we'll we'll be um, we'll be ready to go. I think the great thing we have spring break here coming up, so we'll give the girls a few days off and, you know, mentally, physically take a little bit of a break. Um, and then this is the the fun time where like you just get practice with no opponent. It's like a coach's dream. So just getting them better, getting them hungry, like work on some of the things that obviously didn't go well today. Um, and and it's. I mean, hopefully the players will feel the same way, but it's awesome for a coach when you get a little bit more time just to be with them and extra time with the Jordan King and some of your vets. Uh, so I, I'm confident we'll be we'll be okay. Question from Doug, second row on the left. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, they threw a curveball at me. Emily, go ahead. <laughs> Um, Emily Adams from the Hartford Current. Um, just how did you guys prepare for a player like Brady that you haven't seen a ton of on film or, or in games this year? And how did you feel like she and Liza kind of navigated that matchup? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I think they've been trying to get Brady ready to go um, for more minutes. And, um, you know, I think with their system, though, she just she just played a role. She got kept the ball moving. She got into her, their little flip handoff. She got she ball screened. Um, I thought her defense was really good, just big and physical, you know, behind behind Liza and um, you know, like the, the, that's why they're you know the best program in college basketball history because those those kids are ready to step up and they fought so much much adversity this year. Um, even what Gino's done, you know, with all the injuries early in the season to kind of transform with those young kids. And um, I know I, I try and take a, a little bit of a lesson anytime, you know, to learn how do you get your kids to step up differently. And I, I thought she was. She was great. She didn't have to do too much. Um, just be solid, and sometimes that's good enough with the other players around you. Now we'll go to Doug. Hey, Coach. Doug Feinberg, DAP. You've been around the game for a while as a player and as a coach. Can you remember a time that there's the excitement there is right now in teams for women's basketball across the board? I mean, the great players, mm -hmm. the great teams. Just It seems there's a, a different feel this year than there's been probably – that I can remember. Yeah, I mean, the old saying, if you, if you invest in it, people will come, um, whether that's monetarily, whether it's getting people in the stands. I, I, I just think the star power is at its best. Um, I, I just can't believe, even in our gym, too, back in Milwaukee, just the little kids who are coming out, um, boys and girls who are just um, just obsessed with our players and just want their autographs. And so small moments like that, and even like, whether it's it's Paige and people traveling hundreds of miles or Caitlin Clark, like to, to see them or maybe get a picture, it, it, it's phenomenal. And somehow, you know, hopefully when, you know, Caitlin and Paige move on to the WNBA, we'll have the next wave of, of stars coming in and we don't stop the momentum. Because um, just even, you know, on the micro level where we are out, out in the Midwest, it's, it's, it's getting there, right? And it's, you know, they love Jordan King, they love Liza Carlin, Kenzie Hare, like you can't believe it. So... Um, I just, um, I'm so happy to be a part of it. And so even like when you have a day like today where you're just like, golly, you just, you know, you're not happy. Um, just to see again that UConn fans come out and support their program. And um, if we can keep, you know, keep it contagious, um, keep pumping the money into it, um, keep celebrating those women who have, have deserved it for decades, um, you know, I think we're in a, in a really good place. Question up top in the back. Hi, Kristen Parisi, the Marquette Flyer. Hi, Coach. So out of the two games in this entire weekend, what will you take in going into postseason? Just like in general, what do you take from this weekend, the good, the bad, just everything? <laughs> the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. I, I you know, was just thrilled about our win yesterday. And, you know, Nova had our number a little bit, but just the way we, we figured out how to win. And um, defensively, we were really good. And then, you know, we were confident coming in today. And sometimes the game of basketball doesn't turn out the way you want it. And, uh, you know, like I, I answered before, like we'll reset ourselves, get some rest. Um, I love my team. Um, there's some interesting stats on here. We'll probably rip up the stat sheet and not worry about it. Um, we probably broke some records for the wrong wrong reasons, but um, I think there's a lot of um, a lot of things to be proud about with this team. And you know, some of the internal stuff when you know kids are banged up and things that we try not to like publicly talk about just to keep it in house. Like we've battled through a lot, and so to get 23 wins and you know the consistency, um, we have a lot to be proud of, and, and we'll build that momentum this week. Any other questions for Coach? Coach, thank you. Thanks, Good luck in the tournament.
We can start without them. We don't need them. We'll, we can definitely get it going. Uh, opening statement from Coach Oriyama. Uh, you know, sometimes you, <clears throat> sometimes you put together uh, an idea, you know, you put together a plan with your team, and you think that uh, if we can execute some of this plan, we'll be, we'll be in pretty good shape. We'll give ourselves a chance to win. Um, and every once in a while, you know, it kind of comes out um, exactly how, how you imagined it, it, it could come out. Um, you know, we knew, we knew that <clears throat> defensively we, we needed to play really, really well, and, and it was even better than I imagined. And obviously, you know, when, when a score is like that, you need help from the other team, and I think they missed a lot of shots that they normally make which that's what happens sometimes, you know. Um, but the way we, you know, the way we carried each other uh, was probably the most impressive thing for me is that um, we, we, we relied on, on, on each other so much. Obviously, Paige, you know, did Paige things, but everybody... Um, Today was really a team, um, a team triumph. It really, really was. It was, it was pretty special to be a part of that. I wish this was tomorrow. I wish today was Monday. Unfortunately, it's not. <sighs> Let's start with questions for Paige or Ice. Uh, wait for the microphone. Please state your name and affiliation. Roger, go ahead. Roger Cleveland from the Waterbury Republican American. Paige, first of all, was it your decision to jump? And you turned to the team and, and flexed. I mean, was that what was going on there? It was sort of a discussion. It wasn't long. I was going to win that discussion, but I was, once we found out Leah wasn't playing, it was either me or Ice, and I was like, yeah, I got it. But the I kid she jumped against was one of her teammates, and she let her do it. Nah, Liza, I, she didn't let me do that, but anyway. <laughs> uh, <coughs> Yeah, I don't know if they had the most confidence in me, like the confidence I had in myself to win the jump ball. So I just let them know a little bit. I wanted to put Nesh in there and do our best Eddie Goodell, but they don't know who he is, so <laughs> it would have fallen on deaf like ears. Question from Pat in the front left. Pat Eden Rob with the Associated Press. Um, Paige, with the layout, I, we obviously knew going into the game that you were going to need to do a little bit more what did what was your mindset going into the game and getting your teammates' confidence up? Uh, my mindset really was I was focused on rebounding um, with Aaliyah out. That's a huge piece that we're missing. Um, Aaliyah grabs every single rebound um, that comes off the rim. I mean, just leading the commu the communication with our group. Um, I thought me and Ice did a really good job of talking on the switches on when to guard who in the post, um, try to keep her inside as much, um, and try to keep me outside. Um, but just communicating, leading by example, leading by passion, leading by the energy that I, I played with, um, and just leave it all on the floor. Um, we know what we don't have, but we didn't want to focus on that. We wanted to focus who was on the floor, um, and we were confident in anybody that we put out there. Um, so just rebounding um, and communicating was the focus. Question in the middle here from Maggie. Maggie Benoni, CC Insider. I see, you know, you knew that you'd be stepping in today and likely playing the whole game, which you did. How do you prepare for that mentally, knowing that there is no one else to come in for you? I mean, I feel like in practice, you know, coach, the coaches, teammates, we do a great job of trying to simulate that, going as hard as we can. Um, he talks about the more you run the floor, the better you'll get at that. So just that week leading up, I tried to push myself as much. And obviously, we didn't expect to not have Aaliyah, but um, I feel like just preparing definitely paid off um, and I felt I felt good out there so yeah. front row Brad hi Paige Bradley WNBA swish your team had a lot of success in the paint this afternoon did, did you see Marquette do anything differently on defense or did you have to adjust any offense for you to really get under the rim today um, it was a focus before the game. Um, we're an undersized starting lineup, um, which has 
sort of weaknesses on the defensive end, but it makes them, if they go big, have to, one of their bigs has to guard one of our guards. So it was a huge emphasis um, to get in the paint, create, um, try to attack mismatches, um, whoever had the big guy on them, um, and then create from there. So a huge emphasis going into the game was getting into the paint and creating from there. Question up front from Dom. Dom Memori, Hartford Current. Paige, uh, the way you guys came out, uh, very aggressive, very disruptive, even though you couldn't afford to get in foul trouble. It seems like you put them back on their heels right away and that they never really recovered from that. Is that what you guys, what you guys were trying to do, knowing, knowing your position, to, to try to get that kind of jump them a little bit? Yeah, we wanted to start the game aggressive, sort of set the tone of what the rest of the game looked like, but we talked about it um, in the huddle leading up to the game in the locker room of just how focused and locked in we were going to have to be, um, especially, like you said, uh, defensively not getting into foul trouble, but also wanting to disrupt their offense and, and what they do in their flow. Um, so I thought just starting the game out like that, sort of setting the tone, um, I thought we did a great job of that, um, balancing being aggressive and being smart at the same time. Question in the middle from Emily. Emily Adams, Hartford Current. Um, Ice, uh, Marquette's coach just talked a little bit about your defense today. Just how much do you feel like you've grown in that aspect of your game, and how did you kind of navigate the, the matchup with Carlin today? I feel like uh, that was, yeah, definitely an emphasis leading up to the game um, with them having two post players trying to, like you said, trying to navigate that. Um, lots of film, watching how to, you know, read the duck in. Um, definitely struggled with that, and he gave me a hard time about that, so I made sure that I was locked in. Um, he, who's he? Oh, just, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so I just, I would say um, definitely an emphasis from the coaches, but done a great job of like watching that film and um, going over it a lot in practice, making sure that um, they don't get that position because again, once, you know, they get it, it's over. So, um, yeah. Question in the back right corner. Hi, Kristen Parisi, Market Wire. This is for either of you. So at the beginning of the third quarter yesterday, Providence made a little bit of a run to kind of get back in the game. But today, Marquette just didn't really have any response. So how did you kind of use the energy coming out of the second half and, you know, just like really blow them out of the park, especially after you hit the buzzer beater at the end of the third quarter, Paige? Uh, yeah, um, learning from yesterday, we wanted to come out and be aggressive the same way that we started the game. We wanted to start the half that way. Um, and Again, it set the tone for what the rest of the half was going to look like. Um, no game is won in the first 20 minutes, so we really emphasized that in the locker room that we needed to finish the last 20 minutes um, and play and leave it all on the court um, and start that third quarter strong. Maggie? Um, again, for Ison, this is only your first postseason still, your second postseason game. What was the best advice either Aaliyah or one of the upperclassmen gave you about what it takes to play in this time of the year? Just being locked in, um, everything matters at this point. And I would say not wanting to have this be, you know, our last game go home. And um, I felt like that really stuck with me. So whatever I was feeling, like mentally, if I was frustrated or whatever, there was no time for feelings or anything like that. And just making sure that I needed to do whatever I needed to do to make sure, you know, our team was locked in and we, we won. And I feel like we did that. Teammates did a good job of keeping us, like, all – focus on the same goal. Um, and so, yeah, just knowing that we have one goal in common, I feel like really helped us just lock in and whatever mistakes happened, happened, and we just moved on and, you know, focused on what, what the task was. Got time for two more right up front. We'll go Pat and then Roger. Paige, uh, you held them to no points in the fourth quarter, 12 baskets on 54 shots. Can you just talk about the defensive uh, effort in this game and the intensity and, and and what did you think you guys did better in this game than you have like all season? Uh, I think the biggest thing was the communication, um, the way we talked, the way we prepared in our shoot around. Um, Marquette's a really disciplined team in the offense that they run. So for us, it was trying to, to disrupt um, what they're comfortable with um, and try to get in passing lanes, um, deny their shooters, um, me and Ice, holding the paint down. Um, holding the paint down. <laughs> but, no, nah, I think the communication was the biggest piece. We knew we didn't have Aaliyah um, in the paint to get the rebounds to protect us. So we definitely had to lock in extra, communicate extra, um, and just pay attention to the scout and their tendencies. Hey, Paige, can you describe what it was like to be out there playing that hard for so long? I mean, did you feel 
momentum? Did you feel the energy? You guys just looked so locked in. What did it feel like? Yeah, I, from the opening tip, um, when we went on the 7-0 run to start the game, you just felt the hunger and the passion and the energy that we had. Um, but it helped to get a strong start like that, but it, it continued throughout the whole entire game because we knew coming in that we had to play a full 40 minutes. Um, Marquette's a great team, and they could go on a run at any point. Um, so just to have that energy and, and the passion that we were playing with, it becomes contagious with, within each other. Um, and any time Marquette went on a run or we went through a drought, we stayed composed, stayed confident, um, and just kept playing our game. Paige Ice, thank you. We'll let you guys get back to the locker room. Thank you. Appreciate thank you. it. Good luck tomorrow. Questions for Coach? Vicki, go ahead. Do you know, um, Paige talks about leaving it all on, on the court. Uh, can you just uh, speak to how, like, I mean, she does that. You know, you, you said, it, like, how competitive she is. But just uh, she was, like, crawling on the floor for rebounds and hit, hitting that shot at the end of the third quarter, just how, how much she did today. Uh, it's <clears throat> it's remarkable, I think, the uh, the way players like Paige can um, can summon up exactly what's needed in any given moment, any given game, um, and to then be able to execute it. Um, and she's one of those unique superstars that wants to be that at both ends of the floor you know not every not everyone values those same things she she gets a lot of enjoyment out of you know the rebounding that she can do um you know the block shots the the steals stealing the inbounds pass you know on out of bounds play um she she just has a great sense of the game and what's happening next and that, that I think that's probably why she's never surprised because I think she always knows what's happening next and um, and obviously you know our players feed off of that and they feed off of her um, you don't um, you don't come across players like that very often you know we've been fortunate here at Connecticut but she's um, she's different that's it. She's different, and that's evident every time you see her play. And the bigger the game, the more different she she becomes. Um, she's, it's hard to explain sometimes. Question up front from Brad. Hi, Gino. Brad from WNBA Swish. You mentioned in your opening statement about it being a team triumph. Can you speak of how and why everyone just communicates so well together on the floor that they s seem to always be in the right place at the right time? It's been a, um, it's been a real struggle trying to, um, try and incorporate our veterans with our, with our young players. They're on two different wavelengths a lot of times. Now you got three of them out there. Um, so they had the majority today. You know, there was three of them. And um, even if they got it wrong, they were all wrong. So in a sense, they were right. Um, the, the communication was really good today. You know, we talked about when we left shoot around this morning, and we said the guys that – there's always guys on the floor that know exactly what's going on. The danger is when they don't say anything. So there's always people on the floor that will never know what's going on. But today the emphasis was the players that actually know what's going on need to talk, and I mean talk nonstop the entire game. And you other guys that don't know anything, you need to listen and just do what they tell you. And today was about as good an example of that as, as you can imagine. Question in the back from Joe. Uh, Gino, Joe's own channel three in the back. When you drew it up pregame for your team and for ICE, was this about as close as what you expected to get from her today? Yeah, yeah. 
Um, I, I would say the uh, the presence that she has in in, in the lane um, was going to be a, a huge factor for us as long as she stayed out of foul trouble and could be that presence in the lane. Then we just had to play around her. You know, there were a couple times when what happens is, you know, the way Marquette plays, you know, there's a lot of movement in their offense. And what we didn't want to happen was ice wandering out on the perimeter to go guard people, which we would let Aaliyah do, but, you know, that needed to change today. Um, so we just needed to make sure that the other players were, like she was kind of like, hopefully, you know, like a bicycle, you know, she's kind of like the hub there, you know, and everybody tried to play around her and keep her in the spot where she could be most successful. And it worked out about, well, there were parts of shoot around this morning when I thought, we can't do this. We can't, we, this is not going to be possible. Because they were all looking at each other like, what are we doing here? And uh, um, we stayed with it. And we didn't have to deviate from it, which, you know, doesn't always work that way. You've got to have a plan B. We did have a plan B. It wasn't, wasn't very good, but we didn't have to go to it. Roger, front left. Roger Cleveland from the Waterbury Republican American. Gino, what's the last time you remembered playing with this effort? I mean, you guys have played tremendous games for the last 30 years, but the effort just seemed at another level today where guys were just constantly harassing the ball or hustling back or cutting through people. <clears throat> um, there have been times, there have been teams that we've had here, uh, those of you that have followed us for a long time, that it wasn't that big a deal. We, we held somebody to five points and a half because we just overwhelmed people with our numbers too, not just with our talent, but with our numbers that we were able to keep the pressure on for an entire game. Today was different in that it had to be that way without the ability to replace you if fatigue set in or um, – Foul, foul issues. So to play that that hard for that long a period of time without getting a chance to get get a breather to me was was about as as impressive as anything that we've done. You know, not just in this tournament, but um, it's been a long time since I've seen anything like this when there was that much asked of you know. So few players. Second row on the right. Coach, um, Azar Johnson from NBA Online. Um, on a scale of 1 to 10, to piggyback off that statement, how impressed were you? Everybody's going to see about Ice and Page and about the points they scored. But defensive-wise, you guys were very impressive. Um, how impressed on a scale of 1 to 10 were you with their defense today? <clears throat> I don't know that it could have been any better. Um, it was it was it was it was difficult for for them to get the looks that they wanted, and when those looks did materialize, it was a rush for them. And you know you're in a conference tournament, you're trying to win the tournament, you're playing a team that's a little bit wounded, and we get off to the start that we got it makes it difficult to make shots in that situation because every shot becomes huge. When you're winning, you know, it's easy to make shots. But I think the fact that we came out the way we did and we kept the pressure on, it made every jump shot, every shot that they took crucial for them. And it's hard to go through a whole game like that. And our defense was, you know, we sustained it for the entire 40 minutes. Question from Mike in the back left. Hey, Gino, Mike Anthony from Hearst. Can you share your version of how the discussions went about who would take the jump ball? And <laughs> more importantly, Gino, she, she wins the tip and then has like a little muscle flex, and you guys all seem to get a chuckle out <coughs> of it. I, uh, and then, of course, she goes and scores right away. What, what did that sequence, her adding some personality and, of course, two, two points right away do to just kind of set everyone at ease? Yeah, it's getting kind of old because she did it down at the other end when she blocked the shot late in the game. 
Um, so, you know, spending time in the weight room all of a sudden, I guess, gives you the, you know, the feeling that that's, you know, that you're Maya Moore now all of a sudden. But she takes a lot of pride in um, doing things that people maybe think that she can't do. And she says so much, like you're not even privy to any of this, but she says so much. She, <laughs> she talks about herself so much in a positive way, this is what I'm going to do. Like she actually tells them, this is what I'm going to do. Not in a bad way, it's just nonstop. That when she does it, it's almost like I told you I was going to do it. And it's, it's fun. It's fun to be around that. But at the same time, we're all rooting for her not to get it done so we can make fun of her. But... Uh, there's just something in her that is, um, I, 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 I can't describe, because you never know whether it's real or she's putting on a happy face, but there is nothing, literally nothing that she thinks that if she sets her mind to it that she can't do. Like she ran around the court after that, buzzer beater at the end of the third quarter, whatever it was, she knew it was going in. And, and, you know, that's how she is. She knew it was going in, but then she likes to celebrate like I told you so. That's, you don't find kids like that anymore. First, they're, they don't have the guts to say it before they're going to do it. And then if they do, you know, which it's hard to do, but she's, um, yeah. She's different. She's different. And every kid on the team, without her, they're not as good. Without her, they're not as good. And they're good, don't get me wrong, but without her, the pressure on them would be so immense that I'm not sure they'd be able to handle it. <clears throat> Tom, go ahead. Tom, I'm Maury Hart for Current. You know, uh, I guess we're kind of dancing around the same topics here, but the way you guys started the game, kind of almost, as I mentioned, putting them back on their heels, it almost looked like this was the program that was trying to win something for the first time. Yeah. And they were the ones that yeah. you know, maybe had won a lot of different, like you guys were playing like the underdog. Yeah. How do you coach that? How do you bring that out? Is that all page? Is that response to the circumstances? How do you get that attitude from a program that's, that, that's done with this, what you guys have done? Um, well, a couple things happened. One, we did not necessarily plan to play the first five minutes the way we ended up playing. The strategy was a little bit different. And then right before introductions, we said, how about if we just stick to the way we've been playing, don't change anything, and just be very, very disruptive, as disruptive as we can. Because the initial game plan was we can't be like that because we can't risk the foul problems. But when I said, I knew this is what they wanted. So when I said it, they're collectively, yes, that's how we want to play. So we went and just went with our regular routine. But the thing that was, that was talked about a lot in the locker room, how often does a Connecticut team go into a game where you actually kind of are the underdog that they go, how can you possibly win with five players and missing an All-American? I said, you know how fortunate you guys are? The Connecticut players are never in that situation. I said, but at the same time, so we're not the underdog because we're, we're better than that. So I don't want you to think that we're the underdog, but that's the perception that's going to be out there. But we're better than that. And if we play our A game, we're going to win. And <laughs> Nika said to me at, at, at pregame this morning, she goes, I feel really good about today. Like, I'm really confident. And I'm not faking either. <laughs> she says, I really, I really feel really good about it. And I think that was the kind of that permeated the entire team. You know, can you can you give an update on Aaliyah? Uh, you know, the swelling and the, the being able to, you know, people think you just slap a mask on and you're good to go, but you have to be able to breathe. 
you know, and you have to, you know, not have headaches and no concussions, which was great. So now it's just a matter of when, when are you comfortable? Is it tomorrow? I don't know. I doubt it, but who knows? But um, I would say by two weeks from yesterday, we'll be good to go. We'll be right, right, right back to normal. Is it broken? Yes. Way broken. <laughs> it's way broken. We have time for two more. We'll go to Doug on the left. Coach uh -huh. Doug Feinberg, AP. Over the last three years, you've had a lot of one-name stars and Diana, Sue, Maya, Paige. It seems now there's so many spread across the country of Paige, Caitlin, Angel, Juju, keep on going. Yeah. Can you remember a time that their star power is what it is now spread out across the country and potentially there's probably more on the women's side for the first time than there is on the men's side? Uh, yeah, I've always said that, that, that it's good and bad that the guys get to like spend one year in college and then leave the, the best ones. But they also don't become household names, you know? And they don't get a chance to create that stardom for themselves. They're like here and they're gone. Which, y you know, most of those guys would trade a little bit of stardom for the money that they're going to make. When all those players that you mentioned were playing, there were a lot of really good players. They happen a lot of times to be on the same team. So now they are spread out more. There were a lot of really good players back then that became WNBA greats, became Hall of Famers, Olympians from across the country. There's just never been this much attention paid to women's basketball. So now it's really, really evident who, that there's stars out there in this game. Whereas before, I think, was, they were there, but nobody wanted to acknowledge it and appreciate it as much. And finally, to your point, they're just really good. And everybody's going around telling everybody how good they are. And they're all visible. It's not just UConn and Tennessee on TV, all, you know, and that's the one game that everybody in America watches. Those kids are on TV a lot. They're in the limelight a lot. And they know how to handle it because they're used to it now. It's going to get even better. Some of the kids coming out of high school are just unbelievably good. And they're not all going to the same schools, unfortunately, for me. <laughs> last question, Emily. Uh, just a little bit off topic, but we've seen Jana warm up the last couple of days and all that. Just how is she progressing, and what are you guys kind of hoping to accomplish getting her out there? Yeah, you know, obviously there's a routine to that time timetable. And... Um, our doctors and our athletic trainers, um, you know, they've got, the, they've got the menu every day. This is where, and then at this time, how many months? This is what we're going to do, little by little. Uh, obviously, she's been dying to get out there and do some things. Um, the more we see her out there, the more we see her running around, the more we see some of the things she does, the more... We, the more we miss her, you know, because we realize what she could bring to our team. Um, the only unfortunate thing for her is, you know, Ramadan starts this week. So she's, you know, she's walking around with bags of food, getting ready to stock up. And that's the, you know, that's the only, right now, that's the only thing that's on her schedule that, um, you know, every, everything else on her schedule is what time's my rehab, what am I allowed to do, what time are my classes. Like, she has no life other than rehab because she wants to play so bad. Um, I can't wait for people to see her play. She just has a, a real unique personality that I think people are going to really fall in love with. Coach, thank you. Thank you.